Red lights are about to go out and round three of the European Le Mans series for 2022 is go now here at Monza. Great overtake at the head of the order, although there was some contact between Julien Canal and Philippe Chimadoma. Contact between the two LMP2 cars, certainly heart in mouth moment there for the two drivers involved. Oh, big, big slide and uh, d double, triple contact there between the 31 and the 22. Here's your leader, Sarah Bovey, in the pink Ferrari, but from both sides being attacked and around the outside there. Here comes Ferdinand Habsburg, who's caught up with Julian Canal. This is not for the race lead, but it's for second because Nicholas Cruton is stretching his legs now. Hey, no, massive big, crash. Big massive crash for Michael Fassbender and Memo Rojas, and also one of the Rinaldi racing Ferraris as well. Now, I don't know how that developed, but here's the onboard looking at safety the back car immediately. of Michael Fassbender's Porsche. It was a Kane car and yep. Fassbender. Memo Rojas. Revolves. Yeah. They're side by side. So what happened here? Fassbender goes to the kerb. And it was Fassbender. Fassbender went wide, lost immediate control, hit Duncan Cameron, and then he was catapulted, oh, Fassbender cap catapulted into a rather luckless member of Rojas. It was an error from Michael Fassbender, I'm afraid. What I don't know is, was there some contact between the... Certainly there was a lose for Fassbender, but I think there was possibly side to side contact between Cameron and Fassbender before that moment back to uh, full race pace again. Well, he's clearly been on the right-hand side of the road as well. The bullet that's missing from the rear right is sitting on the paved section, which is the... Safety car again. ...which is the escape road. And there is debris across the track. He's got into the barrier before the braking zone. So there's the bullet detaching and skating across the road. Massive damage on the front left, which has destroyed the suspension on the inter Europol competition car. It's the whole of the front and underbody down the middle of the road, not giving the opportunity for Habsburg, who has to take avoiding action. He's been bullied out of that by Nick Croyton. Well done, young man. And if you think, I've never seen that part of the Monza circuit before, well, that's because that's the runoff of the second chicane. You have to go around the right-hand side of the bollard to legally rejoin, and he's lost a place because of it. So now, and almost immediately it happens, and this time it's uh, it's the other way around. It's double yellows meanwhile at turn 10. So something's gone on there. Uh, Nick Croyton retains the lead, but will need to give that up and give that up quickly. The safety car again. The blue, white, uh, well, the two-tone blue and white. It's got over to the left-hand side and then to the right side of the track. Let's Here's the doctor. Now. Very this quick is... response oh, indeed. It's almost a carbon copy. Year, going very deep into the Parabolica is the 57 Kessel Racing Ferrari for Takeshi Kimura. It's the 17 car. It was started by Maurice Smith, but Benham has had a moment kind of similar just from looking in the aftermath. Well, Ben Viscar, we're going to go full course yellow. Uh, there is definitely oh, damage. 100%. Under it. That car looks to me to have been. Of the magnitude of Edek and Cool want to come in to make a pit stop, then Lorenzo Colombo and his Prima team do not want to miss the advantage presented by a full course yellow. Uh, there are drivers out there able to take that fight to them. Side for second position, Colombo's run through the Parabolica was mighty, and he's just about ahead now of Nicola Lapierre, who cannot hold him back. Lapierre fainted to the right-hand side to try and close him down, but it was too late. And as long as Colombo gets scrubs off the required speed into turn number one, and the two cars came very close to contact nose to tail there, 12 seconds between Jack Aitken and Jot van Outer will absolutely disappear. It's James Winslow, it is indeed. And that's going nowhere, James. And he's got good drive here as well. Because this will give him the inside line into the Della Roger chicane, if he can keep the 24, 28 car there, and he's done it. Drove the nine car just slightly towards the kerb as well, and Della Traz, the three in the Iron Dames, although it's nip and tuck. Now for the 37 oh. car from a long way back for Cool Racing. There is the number nine car. There's a dust in front as well, but not. He's and here's it. the move it. change into the second Lesmo and gets it. 
Louis Delatrasse, who ran a touch wide and is now on the back foot because he's about to be overtaken by Jack Aitken for third position. Moves to defend, moves again. Remember, this is the championship Dossin, leading round team. Round the outside. Round the outside will go Panis Racing's Hjop van Outert and the championship leading team is losing points hand over fist here. They're all of a sudden on one lap. Phil Hansen will pit at the end of that lap and Rivera is also in as well. Paul Luke Chatin from the lead of the race. What the overall position is going to be in this race with those three penalties coming the way of leading cars. Off the road for the 83 car. So this time... Davini Recon fancies a go here as well. Over the curbs, we're only either side from the I Links cars. Go on, Rahal. It's five wide. Right, <laughs> round the outside. <laughs> That's a fabulous manoeuvre. And Recon's was. going there too. Did the Porsche go down the escape road as well? Oh, no, it was no. contact. It wasn't Sharndorf's fault, in fairness. No. Veroni just didn't turn in, preventing Sharndorf from going through. And then Veroni shortcut the chicane as oh, well. Oh, there's trouble there between the 35 and the 51. And that contact. was obviously before all the GT cars arrived. This is out out of the second Lesmo, where you Stopping. would be absolutely Oh, that's a terrible place to hit. stop. And there's a spun car. That has to be the two. That has to be the two. From the lead in Because the three is out. The three is out. It's Finn Gersitz, who was leading across the line, and Glenn von Berlo is now confirmed as the leading car. Delatraz, a cracking run on Thomas Laurent, and I don't think Laurent's going to be able to hold back the Swiss driver, although... Well, you know that. what? <laughs> Inside oh. line, there's contact. That's sent the number nine car out onto the curbing. Now, Delatraz will say, well, I was put there, so I don't need to give the place back. But Thomas Laurent will say, well, you made contact with me at the turning point, so you absolutely do have to do that. Sean Dorf in from the lead in GTA. Does. And, and does indeed. Right, so uh, fair play to Louis Delatraz. Heads up, actually. Yeah, not wanting to take the penalty. He thinks, well, I've still got three more minutes. Patrick Pile and now Paul Luc Chatin to turn on the style and bring the former championship winning team from 2019 to a race victory. It is Edex Sport who take the win here at the four hours of Monza. And a jubilant Patrick Pile, his first prototype win. Edex Sport victorious ahead of Panis. Prema penalised for a late pit stop infraction. Milner Motorsport take third. No changes in the LMP3 into Europol 360 and Euro International on the podium, but Iron Links were disqualified from victory, handing that to Proton Competition for being pushed by the 83 car before Park Ferme. Delighted winners in LMP2 and overall, Edex Sports claiming victory in Monza. Paul Lafargue, Paul Luc Chatin and Patrick Pillay ahead of Julien Canal, Jupp van Eichert and Nico Jamin. But on the podium, the Prema team later pushed down to fifth. So Mulder Motorsports, Matthias Kaiser, Thomas Laurent and Hugo de Vilde took third place. Prema do, however, still lead the points. 13 ahead of Edex Sport, who now creep two ahead of Panis Racing. Third in Imola, victorious in Monza in Pro-Am, Nielsen Racing's number 24 car. Rodrigo Sales, Matt Bell and Ben Hanley. Joining them on the podium from Racing Team Turkey, Sally Ollis, Charlie Eastwood and Jack Aitken. While in third were Algarve Pros, John Falp, James Allen and Alexander Peroni. All of which means that Nielsen Racing's 24 crew closed the gap a little on the points leaders Racing Team Turkey. First car to the chequered flag in GTE was the number 60 Ferrari from Iron Links, but they were disqualified for being pushed by the sister 83 car before they got to Park Ferme. And that means the 77 Proton Competition Porsche ended up on the top step of the podium. Absolute racing, making it into third place. The team's initial jubilation soon turned to bitter disappointment when it became obvious that having the Iron Dames car pushing the 60 car towards the pit lane was not going to go down well with the stewards. 
Peloton competitions, Christian Reed, Lorenzo, Ferrari and Jimmy Bruni, who initially finished second, were promoted to victory ahead of Takeshi Kimura, Frederick Shandorf and Mikkel Jensen of Kessel. Absolute Racing's Andrew Harrianto, Martin Rump and Alessio Piccarello inheriting third spot. Proton lead the standings after three races of the season. No such post-race dramas for the winners in LMP3. Into Europol competition, car number 13, victorious in Monza. Absolutely ecstatic. Uh, it was flawlessly executed by the team. These two guys did just an outstanding job. They they carried it home, and um, and we just we put this one together. We we've learned a lot in the last two rounds, and uh, and we're we're here to be on top for the rest. Nicholas Pino, Charles Cruz, and Guillermo Oliveira, the winners ahead of Terence Woodward, Ross Kaiser, and Mark Richards, and Euro International Spikes Cobalt and Matt Arbel in third. Cool Racing lead the standings by just four points, and only six behind RLA M Sports. Number five car is the number three from United Autosports. It is tight at the top.